with less than 24 hours to go until new inflation numbers are released. What is inflation? Inflation is the rate at which the things you want to buy are going up in price. And what are the things you want to buy? Well, you might want to buy pizza, you want, might want to buy Netflix, but you might want to buy a house. You might want to rent a house, but if you want to rent a house, it might not go up in price as much as if you want to buy a house. Yes, we have inflation data coming out today. This is actually quite a big issue for most of the financial markets, including Bitcoin. But really, all you want to know here is if it's above 3%, pretty bad and we can expect Bitcoin to dump. If it's below 3% or below, I would say 2.8%, then Bitcoin should be expecting a pump, right? This is not always going to be the case. There may be a lot of traps, but personally, as long as it's between that kind of range between 2.8 and 3. Point, I would say 3.1, then it's not really a big issue. And I think the markets will probably just trap around and everything will just go back to normal within a few days, right? So uh, let's just see how that goes. If it is something like a 5% or a 2%, that's where we get real, real uh, big movements in the markets, right? And not just Bitcoin, but everything. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But um, until that time, let's just jump into the news, what the markets are doing, as well as all the trades that I'm going to be looking for for the rest of the week. Okay, in terms of news, we can see that, uh, yeah, they're just reporting on the price of Bitcoin, where it's at pretty standard. But what's important here is Goldman Sachs holds over 400 million in Bitcoin ETFs now. So a bit of a looming uh, thing over the Bitcoin markets, but I don't imagine they just rug that. Surely not. Surely not. Uh, but yeah, if we are looking at this uh, in terms of the general market yesterday, we can see Rune up 12%. We can see FTM banging it as well. Uh, and everything else pretty much, yeah, a little, little sea of green here, which is uh, pretty refreshing uh, based on the past few weeks, of course, right? Uh, if we are looking at fear and greed, back up to a 30. Uh, obviously, yesterday it was 31. I did say it would be oscillating around kind of 20 to 40 uh, around this area for the foreseeable future. We'll see if we get a dump today and this comes down. But really, uh, yeah, this is really the time to be eyeing up a potential long-term buy rather uh, than uh, than selling into the markets based on this fear, right? If we are looking at ETF overview here, we can see uh, yesterday that we did get 39 million trickling in. It's trickling in here into the Bitcoin markets, which is good. Okay, uh, so a bit of investor confidence back in the game here. Uh, if we are looking at Bitcoin production cost, uh, I usually use this to figure out where our lows are, right? So if we're looking at this bottom red line here, usually when we do get close to it, uh, that's usually the bottom for Bitcoin, right? And this is this is pretty consistent over the whole of Bitcoin's history. So uh, what we are going to be looking at here for potential maximum lows for Bitcoin here, it's about 45.4. So if we do get down below 50K, it's going to be tempting. It's going to be tempting to sell. Uh, it's going to be tempting to short the bottom but that's the area where you really want to be looking at a buy okay if we're looking at on chain here we can see annualized electricity consumption index uh, actually coming down here this is the amount of money miners are spending on mining bitcoin uh, and we can see here that uh, yeah just typically uh, on that downtrend not fantastic but hash rate on the other hand is actually doing pretty well uh, as of right now so uh, yeah i'm still pretty bullish here it seems the miners have figured out a way to, to uh, spend less on electricity but uh, uh, yeah, just, just a little early warning signs on capitulation, but uh, the long signal's still in. The miner's still producing the same amount of hash rate, right? Liquidation heat map. Obviously, again, we got this news coming out today, the inflation data. So we are seeing heavy walls on both sides here in terms of liquidations, people hedging their bets. They're expecting massive volatility. So what do you do if you're a market maker and you're expecting massive volatility? You layer in orders to both sides, you bang the price up and down, and then you fill those orders and just make money off retail. That's essentially what they've done here. That's what we're expecting. So uh, today, I would just say in terms of a range, we should be expecting uh, anywhere above, I would say, 58K. If we get below 58K, very, very bad. But um, yeah, between 58K and I would say 63, 64K, uh, and that's a little bit higher than... Actually, no, 63K, we'll call it. Yeah, I thought 64K was here. But yeah, 63K and 58K, uh, that's really what we're looking for there. Uh, if we are looking at this, we did just put out a trade update here for free. On Patreon, you just press follow. Okay, no payment required. I do this every single weekday. So if you are looking for those signals, feel free to do that. Also, the Prime XBT trading contest just started. Started today it's completely free to enter they give you a simulated balance you can trade on 200x and if you win if you win you get $500 all right so feel free to check that out in the description we just entered and I got a video for last week's contest that we did uh, coming out on Saturday for you guys so uh, yeah you'll be able to see what this is all about right let's get into the charts and the trades that I'm looking for 
All right, let's jump into this and be sure to check out BYDFi in the description as well for buying all of your altcoins. Right, so we're looking for, we are looking for the long term here, the mid term and the short term trades, right? So in terms of the macro, the long term, I'm looking for these trades uh, or investments or swing trades or whatever, right? Uh, over the next kind of few months, right? So this is a bit more long term, but uh, for, for you investors out there, this is really what I'm going for. So we've got this death cross. This is playing out right now as we speak, okay? Uh, and typically with a death cross, if we do get above it, uh, we can actually push off of it quite nicely, all right? Uh, what I am going to be looking for is a move. Uh, if it is something like this where we do pump up to about 63.1, 63.2, I'll be looking initially for a retest of the death cross area, okay? So that's the 50 EMA and the 200 SMA, or the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA, depending on how you, you look at it. I prefer EMAs with Bitcoin. It's just better. It, it accounts for all the volatility just a little bit better, right? But if we are looking at this, this is essentially what we're going for, right? So we're looking to get above it. We're looking for a retest. We're looking to break this high. And then we'll be looking for a long trade all the way up, not necessarily to this trend line. And I'll explain why now, uh, but just underneath this trend line, somewhere around 65K. Uh, and the reason why we're limiting that take profit on that is based on previous times uh, before potential black swan events. So if we are looking at this here, right, which is the uh, uh, the Rovid crash, right, <laughs> we can see that, uh, yeah, typically with this thing, we did actually, uh, we did pump up, okay, but uh, on the way up, we didn't actually hit this trend line. And this is typical of what we call a inverse parabolic curve. So a parabolic curve is something that goes up like this, right? An inverse parabolic curve is something that goes down like so, right? And with an inverse parabolic curve, uh, you can expect to uh, not hit your trend lines uh, and actually just stop just before them and then dump. A b oh, I just deleted everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then dump just before we hit the trend lines, right? Uh, so I'll be looking for something very similar like that to happen. It's not something that I'm super like expecting, but with the way the world is right now, uh, it's something we can't rule out. And it is something that uh, I am going to be kind of keeping an eye on. Okay, I'm going to be keeping an eye on, but we will be still targeting that long up into that area. Uh, and that's that's essentially what's going on there. In terms of super long term, if we do break 74k, you guys know the drill, or at least, or really 70k, right? We want to get to 71 retest and then break the high uh, as always okay and then we can probably ride that up to the all-time high initially which will be a four percent trade and then uh up to about 80k which will be like a 10 percent trade so a pretty decent one there uh, and then towards the downside if this is going to be uh, just doom and gloom for the world financial markets which is a possibility uh, we are going to say if we break this low at 50k uh, we will be expecting to come down to about 45 all right and when we when we talked about this earlier right with that lower production cost line okay uh, that is roughly where that is as well so that is roughly where i'll be expecting the bottom to come in for bitcoin so when we do hit 45 5k or if we do hit 45k that's where i'm going to be putting in the big buys the big bucks okay uh, but besides that let's move down to the midterm here the midterm here we have just activated a potential move here towards the upside and we are just looking for this move uh, to to play out today if it can right uh, one thing we will say is because of this interest rate release from the us uh, we will just say that uh take this with caution of course if you do want to miss this trade go ahead uh, we have talked about this in the signal today that it's very, very risky to be trading today. Very risky to be trading because a lot of volatility and traps can come through. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, but uh, as that data does come out a bit later here, guys, I think it's, um, what is it, 12... 12 is midday UTC, I believe it comes out, something like this. Uh, so what we'll be expecting is, uh, yeah, to potentially get above this high, get in along, ride that up, and then take profit essentially at, at this high, right, at, at 62.7. Uh, you could try and ride this all the way to the top if it's super bullish news, but uh, this is a trade that you don't want to just set and forget. You really want to hold, uh, I mean, not hold, you want to be aggressively looking at that and, and looking at potential reversals that could come through, creating that no loss scenario uh, as it does happen as well. Right, so we'll see how this goes, but that's really the upwards trade that I'm going to be looking for. Downwards trade is very, very simple. We will just be looking uh, to break about 56.7 all the way down to about 55k for 2% there. Very, very easy stuff. And that's based on the fact that we did violate this trend line yesterday. Okay, so this could come down as a retest, but uh, we have to lo lose both of these trend lines first. And with this being such a volatile area, guys, I am just going to wait until we, we kind of lose this area first. All right, uh, if we go down to the 15 minute, this is the trade signal we had today. Uh, which is free in the Patreon. Again, you just press follow. Uh, essentially, all you've got to do there is, uh, yeah, look at this. This is the riskiest trade here, okay? This is something that uh, is, it's, 
it's here, but it's it's about a 60-70% success rate, I would say. Uh, so nothing crazy here, but we would be looking to get above 61 uh, 1, okay, and then ride that up to about 61.5. You would need kind of VIP 3 here on this thing. Uh, so if you do have Fairdesk, um, if you sign up with my link, then uh, you can you can get that. But um, yeah. 0.6% trade there towards the upside, playing out this smaller measure move. And then if we do get a crashing scenario here, I'm just going to wait until we lose uh, this important zone here, 60K, right? The big round number. If we lose 60K, I do think uh, potentially here that uh, if it is a scenario where it's, it's again, you come down, make a low, retest, break the low. Okay, I sound like a broken record at this point, but uh, we'd be looking for a 1% trade from that point, okay? Uh, that is pretty much all I've got for you today, guys. I will see you guys very, very soon. As you can see, we're super compressed here. And we are ready for a move, but uh, I think this will just go sideways until this news comes out. So um, yeah, look for that market action to come through. But um, in terms of the ultimate strategy here for today, I would probably just say, um, maybe a grid bot, but risky, because if those inflation rates are super high, it could cause a bit more of a black swan, okay? Uh, but, but what I will say here is uh, if they are low, we could get a pretty decent pump with Bitcoin, okay? Uh, so yeah, as of right now, if, if, if the inflation numbers are ridiculous, like a 2 or 3% difference to what they currently are, then uh, expect a big move, okay? If they are kind of neutral, okay, between 1%, okay, each way, uh, and again, it's 3% is what it is right now, but if it's 4% or uh, or 2%, then, uh, yeah, what I would say here is uh, just, just keep an eye on it. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, potentially set up a grid bot if it stays at 3% because I think people will just be banging in orders, okay? Uh, and, yeah, I, I think uh, just based on what we saw with the liquidation heat map, guys, uh, it could be another volatile day. So a grid bot to start off this would, would make a lot of sense here to me. All right, so I'll see you guys very, very soon. Be sure to uh, check out the communities, Telegram, Discord, all of this good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.